China has been working on a digital currency for years now, and now finally it's began testing it. Um, a pilot program for the digital currency was launched in about four cities, uh, and what we are hearing is that uh, it's kind of a digital version of the Chinese renminbi. Now it sounds a lot like what's come before it, you know, the cryptocurrencies like the Bitcoin and Facebook's Libra, but it's also quite different. Different in what ways? And what is China trying to achieve with this new digital currency? I'm going to turn to Tushar Gupta for an explanation. Hey Karan. Karan, so we'll have to answer this question in two parts because the need of this digital currency is actually very important where there was a need for China to go for a digital currency. So for all our viewers who don't know, there's an organization called SWIFT, a private organization, which stands for the Society of Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Now SWIFT doesn't take care of the transfer of funds, but it takes care of the messages that are responsible for the transfer of funds. So for instance, if you're sitting in Australia and I'm sitting in India, and I have to make a high value payment to you, the banks, the financial institutions coordinating our payments will make a financial message through SWIFT, which uh, will contain our account number, the payment being credited and debit and things like that. So in that sense, SWIFT is very important. Now, SWIFT is headquartered in Belgium. Okay, So people would think that this is one of those many uh, organizations that are responsible for financial telecommunication. It's not. It's the organization responsible because even today it caters to more than 11,000 financial institutions in more than 200 countries. Now, where is the problem with SWIFT? It's closeness with the United States. That is where the problem begins. After 2001 September 11 attacks in the World Trade Center and what happened afterwards, the Iraq war and the uh, American adventures in Afghanistan. US actually issued subpoenas to SWIFT where they could actually monitor all the communication that was happening through SWIFT. So on an average, SWIFT uh, handles around 33 million messages per day. So in a way, US had access to all of them in the name of tracking terrorism. Now, in one way, that can be seen as a noble gesture because they want to track down all the illegal transfers between terrorist organizations. And this is early 2000s, early 2010s. But also, it impacts the sovereignty of a nation because there are very high value payments involved. Companies do not feel secure. So that is what happened. Now, lately, a lot of other countries like Russia, like China, they had been working on their alternate payment uh, telecommunication mechanisms outside SWIFT. Russia started with a system for transfer of financial messages, which was SPFS. It was launched in 2014. Why did they launch it? Because uh, after their annexation of Crimea in 2014, Russia came under the sanctions of the United States. So they had to go for their own payment mechanism. In 2015, China came up with its cross-border interbanks payment system to again divert payments outside the SWIFT purview. So this is the need of the digital currency current. They want to get out of the US dominated SWIFT mechanism. Because every, if US puts a sanction, let's say on an Iran, on a Russia, they cannot have payments going through the SWIFT mechanism. That's what they want to do. They want to make themselves independent of the SWIFT mechanism. And that's where the Chinese digital currency comes into play. Right. Tushar, now they've already got it going. Uh, we heard uh, reports that some of the government workers are already receiving a part of their payment in uh, digital yuan. Um, so is this a plan um, internally for tracking and monitoring its population as well? Because if you're going to use uh, the digital version of the currency, China is going to have enough say in, say, telling you how much of the money you can use and how much you can't, isn't it? So we need to understand digital currency in two ways. One, it is not like a cryptocurrency or like a digital wallet, which the government can monitor. Of course, it will be owned by the central bank. And of course, they can monitor. But then China is already monitoring how its citizens spend by ways of their surveillance. Already the companies like Alibaba and Tencent, they already are very close to the government when it comes to data sharing. So I don't see any more changes in surveillance. Of course, the surveillance will be more intensified but I do not see something uh, as a consequence of the digital currency happening. So I'm not really worried about the surveillance, but that's already there. More or less, it would intensify because now you won't have the intermediaries in the form of commercial banks and the digital wallets. Right. Tushar, how, how much 
is this different from the cryptocurrencies that we know from back in the day like the bitcoin libra how is this different because right from a superficial reading you can tell the differences but could you tell our viewers what it is see there are two questions one about the cryptocurrency the cryptocurrency is privately owned it's backed by it's a transaction which you can exchange for some real value in the world your mind and everything the cryptocurrency that is the problem with cryptocurrency however is it's not backed by any central bank now central banks are not interested in cryptocurrency especially privately owned cryptocurrencies because if in a hypothetical situation cryptocurrencies became the norm became a routine for transaction between uh, you and me for retail and high value payments the central bank would lose control on the monetary policy that would have consequences for the financial stability of the system on the credit uh, dispersal and things like that so private uh, central banks do not like cryptocurrencies the second thing was facebook libra which was a unique experiment in terms of stable coins now there are some cryptocurrencies which are backed by a basket of currencies those you can term as stable coins facebook tried that out in 2019 it even came out with a discussion paper it had the backing of some companies including some from china now the problem was you do not want a social media company a social media network the biggest in the world which owns facebook which owns instagram which owns whatsapp to also have a, a, a cryptocurrency even if it's backed by a basket of currencies so that program failed there and then and even the fed uh, federal reserve wasn't very keen about it the chinese digital currency now is backed by the central bank in china so it comes from the central bank the backing is there so people do not need to feel apprehensive about using that currency because at any given point they can trade it for cash they can trade it for their deposits in the commercial banks so this is what makes china's digital currency very very different from the cryptocurrencies we've been reading about another thing the cryptocurrencies all often see a fluctuation in value that makes them very volatile for trading so today if we exchange a cryptocurrency it holds let's say x amount of value tomorrow it comes down to 0.5x one of us will stand to make a loss that's not the case with chinese digital currency because it's being backed by the central bank it's as uh, authentic as using a cash note or a commercial bank deposit right tushar uh, for many years now china has been trying to increase the significance of the yuan in the international financial system uh, but even now it's it's uh paltry the kind of uh, scale that it has in the international system do you think through this means of a new digital currency they can take on say the us dollar see this is a very uh, interesting question in the sense it i'll answer it in two parts one dollar is the reserve currency of the world there's no doubt about that and a china uh, chinese having a digital currency won't challenge that right away let's be very clear about that dollar going forward for the next 10 15 years is going to be the reserve currency of the world there are two reasons for it current one the confidence people have in the us economy as a democratic liberal system people have a confidence in the us uh, entire us economic system the china because of its opaqueness because of the kind of regime it has it doesn't inspire the same kind of confidence probably that's one of the reasons dollar still continues to be the reserve currency of the world now the thing with digital currency very interesting now Uh, there is nothing very uh, certain about how digital currencies are going to work it they might have central banks issuing currencies directly to the people or they might go through commercial banks it depends on how the interest payments on deposits will work out which is another question we'll come back to but let's assume that china digital currency works firstly in china now already in china 80% of the people are on digital payments through alibaba pay tencent and apps like that so they won't have on uh, trouble onboarding people of china onto the uh, digital currency program in the let's say in the next 4 5 years so that's 1 billion people right there what would also happen in the next 5 years that the investments china has made in africa in south america in australia under the belt and road initiative they'll start to mature there'll be a greater market for the use of digital currency because there'll be a lot of cross border payments now the good thing about digital currency is it's fast there is uh, less time that's taken for cross border payments unlike today where you have to go through a lot of taxation a lot of uh, uh, formalities before making a cross border payment the interoperability between currencies of different countries might actually aid the use of digital currency so in 5 years you will see those bri investments maturing greater market more trading of the digital currency greater influence so in short term while china's digital currency might not actually challenge the dollar in the long term you'll see a greater use of it 
and that might actually challenge the dollar. Now, complement it with the alternate payment systems outside SWIFT. So all these factors combined together would actually challenge the dollar, if not unseated completely. So Tushar, I also wanted to ask you now, with the introduction of this digital currency, are you saying now that the, the commercial banks will get obsolete? Hey, that's a very interesting question. This is one question everyone is really asking. Now, if the central bank is going to issue the currency directly, have the option where it can have programmable payments. In, for instance, can it? Uh, we can make micro payments via IoT internet devices. Will the uh, commercial banks become obsolete? It's a difficult question, Karan, because there's no certain model there for digital currency. What it will depend on, let's say you have a digital currency account with the central bank in China. Now, if you're being paid a certain amount of interest on those deposits, let's say the interest is 5%, you would be ha happy to keep your deposits with the central bank. If a commercial bank is offering 7%, you would be happy to keep it with the commercial bank, wherever you get the highest uh, paying, uh, higher interest rate. Now, if commercial banks are not able to keep up with the interest rates of the central bank, they cannot offer any incentive, people will see their deposits moving from the commercial banks to the central bank. In that case, they'll be run on these private banks, commercial banks, which today are seen issuing loans and offering you know, a lot of financial products. What it could do actually in the long run is make actually private commercial banks obsolete. That would hamper the financial stability of the system too, because then the credit dispersal would become a problematic issue because banks won't have that much money to lend. The central banks will have the deposits and sure they'll work, of, uh, they'll work out a way to issue loans as well. But commercial banks would be in a trouble. But again, it depends on the kind of model we see of the digital currency. And all this is just in discussion right now, Karan. We are still experimenting with the digital currency model. So there's nothing certain. But yes, depending on how the interest payments work out, we could have a situation where commercial banks become obsolete. And that would be a giant leap for how we look at currency. It's not impossible. It's a very far-sighted idea, but it's an idea we cannot rule out yet. Great. Thanks so much, Tushar, for your insights.